Welcome, everyone, to the District 55 Toastmasters podcast. I'm Stephanie King, your host. We have a very special guest on the program today, District 55's golden lady, Lark Doley, DTM. Lark, thank you so much for joining us on the program. It is my honor to join you tonight. Thank you. We are so thrilled about you being named President-Elect of Toastmasters International Board. And this happened, of course, just a week or so ago at the 86th Annual Toastmasters International Convention in Vancouver, British Columbia. So I'd like to ask you, Lark, to begin with, how do you feel about this new honor that you have? I am incredibly humbled by this honor. So when I joined Toastmasters 27 years ago, I certainly never expected to become president of this organization and certainly on the road to becoming president. It is an incredibly golden honor to be serving in leadership at any level in Toastmasters, but especially at this level. How would you say Toastmasters has prepared you for this honor? Well, it all begins at the club level. It all begins with being a member of the organization. And I joined the organization in September of 1990. So literally 27 years ago this month, I joined Toastmasters. And I served as secretary in my club, and then I progressed to president in my club. And at that point, I realized how much I enjoyed leadership in the organization. I became aware that there was a position called area governor at the time, and now it's called area director. And so I decided I would love to be an area director and share my knowledge and experience with clubs within my area and have the opportunity to learn from them. So truly the leadership journey started 27 years ago. I never expected to run for international office in the organization, but I can just tell you as I progressed in leadership, through the division position and then the district positions, I knew that I loved to serve. And when given the opportunity to serve even more, I took advantage of that opportunity. But one of the things about my leadership journey is that it stopped at district and then later I served as international director. It stopped again. And later, I served as region advisor, and then I ran for international officer. So I definitely had, I had times within my leadership journey where I was simply enjoying being a member of the organization. And I will tell you that I think that that has made me a better leader because I actually served in leadership, stopped and enjoyed being a member again, served in leadership, stopped and enjoyed being a member, and then started in leadership again. And I just think that gave me more experience in the organization and has made me a better leader today. And how long did you stop those in-between periods? Well, it's very interesting. So I served as the first District 55 governor from 1997 to 1998. And then I had the opportunity to come back and serve as District governor a second time from 2000 to 2001. After that, I did not serve in leadership until 2003 when I became an international director and served two years as an international director, 2003 to 2005. And then there was a five-year break, and I served as the first, one of the first region advisors in 2010 and served two terms as region advisor from 2010 to 2012 and then took a break again and ran for international officer for the second vice president position in 2015. And so those are the different breaks that I've had in my Toastmasters leadership journey. Have you always aspired to become a leader? 
That is a very interesting question. I will tell you that when I joined the organization, my husband-to-be was a member. So Roger Storr was a member of the organization. And Roger was an excellent speaker. And he competed in humorous speech competitions, in evaluation, in table topics, in international speech competitions, in tall tales competitions. He was the speech contestant in the family. And I realized what an excellent speaker he was. And I think because he pursued the speaking track, it made me more aware of the leadership track. And I enjoyed leadership. I enjoyed serving in leadership. And I think that because he enjoyed the speaking so much, it really gave us an excellent relationship in Toastmasters he went the speaking track, I went the leadership track, and I think we both pursued our passions. I didn't know that leadership was my passion at the time, but as I got into it, I realized it was my passion. It was what I enjoyed. It was where I believed my talents fit. And so it was just a natural progression for me, I think. So what does it take to be a leader in Toastmasters? Speaking to just all Toastmasters in the district? I think it takes a servant's heart. It is not about you. It is about wanting to support the members and the clubs around the world. And certainly within the district, it is wanting to support the members and the clubs within the district. So I think it has to be someone who is, who is doing it because they care about the organization. So it's not about them. It's about how much they care about the organization and wanting to see the organization share the benefits of communication and leadership with more and more people around the world. When we talk about leadership, I think about the beginnings of leadership in a Toastmasters club as a president, as a VPPR, VPE, the, and also the actual roles that are played in the meeting, the timer, the Toastmaster of the day, those types of roles. They seem kind of small in a way, but what's the advantage of serving in these roles in the club? Absolutely. I agree with you that sometimes people may say, well, wow, being an awe counter, what does that take? And I say it takes a lot of listening skills. So I think the awe counter role is a very important role and takes a lot of skill. It begins, as you said, with the leadership roles within a club meeting and then the leadership roles as a club officer. And those build on one another. I've had the privilege to serve in every club officer role. So from the sergeant at arms all the way to the club president. And as I said, I actually started out as the secretary and then was fortunate to move into the president role. But in the years that have followed, I have served in every single one of the leadership roles within the club. Those leadership roles build the foundation of leadership in our organization and allow us then to assume greater leadership responsibility. As I said, the area director is a leader responsible for multiple clubs. A division director is responsible for multiple areas. And then when you get into the district leadership roles, the the public relations manager role. So for public relations, PR for an entire district made up of 150 to 200 clubs. So every single leadership role within the organization, I believe, builds on the other leadership roles and just gives us more and more experience at every level of leadership, which gets us from leadership to managing. So managing a district, the district director literally is managing a district. The club growth director is managing the growth of clubs 
within the district and making sure that we retain the Toastmasters clubs that we already have. The program quality director responsible for the training of all our club leaders, of all our area and division leaders. So I believe that every single leadership role builds on the other and, is, and we, we have more and more responsibility in each of those roles until as an officer of this, of this corporation, I am literally responsible for the strategy of this entire organization as one of the members of the board and as one of the members of the, the board of directors of the organization. You have thoroughly talked about leadership internally in the Toastmasters organization. We tell people that we hope to attract to the clubs that they will receive leadership and speaking skills. How do we translate that or how do they translate that into their personal lives and work that they may do outside of Toastmasters? What are those advantages? In our program, our Communication and Leadership Program, we certainly have identified competencies. And with, in our current Communication and Leadership Program, we've identified about 100 competencies that individuals can take into their personal and professional lives. We have a whole new educational program called Pathways that is rolling out to all of the clubs around the world in 2017, 2018. And I will tell you within that educational program, we've identified about 300 competencies that translate into our personal and professional lives. So when you look at every single project within our current communication and leadership program and look at the projects in the new Pathways program, you can absolutely identify direct correlations with growth in our personal and professional lives. So I think about speaking, just speaking skills, communication skills. We communicate from the time that we wake up in the morning until the time that we go to bed at night. We communicate either through our thumbs with texting or we communicate verbally, we communicate in writing. That skill is vital to success as a person in our world. And we teach that. We teach how to improve our communication skills. And then in order for us to progress within our careers, we need leadership skills. And we start by learning the communication skills that are going to make us be effective leaders. And then we groom ourselves in leadership roles within our organization. So I believe every single communication and leadership project within our organization builds our personal and our professional lives. You have mentioned pathways. Talk for a moment about since you've been in Toastmasters 27 years, the changes that you've seen over the years and how big of an impact will Pathways have on Toastmasters International? I believe it's going to be a huge impact, and that is that Pathways is the largest redesign of our educational program since 1924 when we organized this corporation in California when Ralph Smedley incorporated it. So it is the largest redesign of our educational program since that time. And one of the fascinating things about this redesign is we have had in the past, in our current program, we have a communication track and we have a leadership track, and they are separate. Pathways actually combines communication and leadership in nine of the ten paths. We have one path that's called presentation mastery, and that truly is focused simply on communication skills. But in the nine of the, of the, the remaining paths, they combine both communication and leadership competencies in those paths. I believe that this online educational program is going to help us attract more of the younger generation, the millennials, and even the younger than the millennial generation to Toastmasters. 
I also believe that it is going to reinvigorate those tenured Toastmasters like myself who've been through the communication and leadership track as it stands now. And by the way, we will continue to build on the Pathways program. So I see our 10 paths just as the beginning of the different paths that we will have in our communication leadership program going forward. It is completely online based, but individuals can print out the projects. They can also purchase the printed projects just as they can purchase manuals today. But the the strength of our new educational program is that it is online, has lots of online tools, lots of online resources, lots of embedded videos. So there are so many more tools and resources available through our new Pathways program than the current educational program that we have. And can you describe how the Pathways program will roll out? And how will we convince Toastmasters who've been around a long time that this is the best way to go? <laughs> well, we have rolled out pathways now to three separate districts. And we have just rolled it out to Region 14. So we did a couple of pilots with the districts to make sure that Pathways was working properly. Now we've rolled it out to Region 14, and we are going to be rolling it out to different regions throughout the next you know, probably about a year. So the, the next region to roll out, I believe, is 10 and 12, and then we're going to be rolling out other regions as we go through, through this process, this next, the rest of this process for about a year. What do I think will engage our tenured members? I think that the tenured members, when they become engaged in taking the assessment, which will identify three potential paths for them, and then they'll select that path and begin the process of going through this new educational program, I think they are going to be so excited by the resources and the tools that are available to them. And as I said, if they want to print out the projects just like the projects they have today, they absolutely can do that. But I, I believe it's time for us tenured members to realize that the resources that we can use online are so much more robust than just a printed manual. So I think once these tenured members just go into base camp, take the assessment, and then begin the first project, they are going to be so excited by what Toastmasters has developed, what we've achieved, that they're going to be thrilled to continue the progress that they've started in Toastmasters, and hopefully will remain in Toastmasters for years into their future. And how do members hear about Pathways? Who's the face uh, of it? The face of it, well, there are a couple of different faces currently. So we have chief ambassadors and ambassadors within each district. And those ambassadors are go to the clubs and talk to the clubs about the fact that Pathways exists and Pathways will be coming to their districts soon. And then once it is time for Pathways to launch in their district, there are Pathways guides. And these guides are technical, technically savvy in Pathways and how Pathways operates. And they will literally be coming to each club to talk with them about how to access Basecamp how to take their assessment, and then how to begin the process of using the path that they choose in order to begin developing the speeches around the projects within those paths. So the Pathways Guides will actually have time that they will give to each club as well. So you can actually, it's kind of like office hours that they will be available so that clubs can contact them about any questions that they have and work with them in order to be successful in accessing Pathways and beginning their journey in Pathways. 
how long will it take for everyone to experience pathways, do you think? Well, I think we should be complete with Pathways in the 2018 timeframe. So we certainly hope to launch Pathways throughout the world by the end of 2018. I'm sure that will be good news for clubs everywhere. Lark, I'd like to go back a little bit to your experience in Toastmasters. You are a member of two clubs, is that right? That is correct, yes. Now, one of them, I understand, was chartered in the name and the honor, in honor of your father-in-law, Arthur Storer. That's What's correct. What's the reason for it that? Was. And did you start that class? <laughs> well, interestingly enough, it was started during the memorial service for my father-in-law, Arthur, and I was elected president, unbeknownst to me, they pretty much handed us the charter and said, Lark, you're president of this club. <laughs> but it was great because Arthur would have loved it. When Arthur immigrated to the United States in 1994, he immediately joined Today Toastmasters. That was his home club, and that was my home club at the time and my husband's home club. And he loved Toastmasters. He gave 23 speeches, I think, during his time in Toastmasters. Unfortunately, he died three years after he came to live with us in the United States. So it was a short time for us. But he absolutely loved every aspect of Toastmasters and was a competitor in contests as well as a mentor to members of our club. He would do anything to support the members of our club. And after his memorial service, when they formed the club, it was a club that met on Saturdays. So it gave individuals who had busy weeks the opportunity to actually enjoy Toastmasters on Saturday. And it is a club that I've been able to continue to be an active member in because it meets on Saturdays. With the travel that I do for my job and for Toastmasters, it has sometimes been difficult to be a member of a weekday club. But I am also a member of a club at my company, at the company where I work, Maximus, and we formed that club, and believe, in 2008. So I have the privilege to be a member of a company club, which is a little bit different than being a member of a community club. And Arthur Store is a community club. And Lots of people ask. I'm the public relations manager for District 55, and I have VPPRs asking, how do we promote our club inside of a corporation? It is different from a community club. And since you have that experience, do you have a word of advice for them? Yes, I absolutely do. Number one, it is incredibly important that they maintain visibility with the highest level of management within their corporation, that they invite them to their meetings, that they invite them, say, on a quarterly basis to come and speak at their meetings, that they have an annual event where they recognize the achievements of the members of the club and invite those corporate officers to be at that event. So maintaining visibility within the corporation is incredibly important. Letting the corporation know the value that the members of the club are receiving and how that is impacting their ability to do their jobs. So I think it's very important that they let management know the levels of achievement that each of the members within the corporate club are achieving. And if they're being promoted, if those individuals are being promoted, that is important for management to know that those that the skills that they are attaining in Toastmasters are helping them progress up the ladder within the corporation. As far as promotion, promoting the club within the corporation, there are so many ways to do that within a corporation. And I'll just tell you that within my corporation, we have every single week, we have a newsletter that goes out to the entire Texas project of Maximus. And so we can promote Maximus Toastmasters Club within that weekly newsletter. And we try to do it on a monthly basis. Then we also, this it's a nine-story building, and so we have an elevator bank. 
and most people use the elevator on a daily basis. So we literally put out flyers to announce our meetings every month. And that also lets every person who works at Maximus know about the corporation, literally seeing it in the elevator bank in a flyer. So those are just a couple of ways that we do at, at Maximus. But I can tell you within other corporations where they have monitors and they literally put announcements of Toastmasters on those monitors throughout their buildings. So there's so many ways for corporations to publicize Toastmasters clubs. I actually think it's easier for corporate clubs to promote themselves than it is for community clubs to promote themselves. So I encourage corporations to take advantage of every promotional vehicle they have within the corporation in order to promote Toastmasters, but maintaining visibility to management about the success of the Toastmasters Club and what it is actually doing for the corporation is critical to maintain that, that corporate club and the viability of that club within the corporation. Your club is within Maximus. Tell us about your occupation. So I have, I'm privileged to manage the professional development strategy at Maximus Texas Project. So my main responsibility is the professional development of frontline staff and supervisors and management staff within the Texas Project. That's what I currently do. So I get to use my Toastmaster skills every single day developing curriculum and actually conducting and facilitating professional development training. Now, getting just a little personal, Lark, you are a lighthouse homeowner. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, the very interesting. So we talked about my father-in-law, Arthur Storr. He passed away in 1997. He passed away just as I was taking the helm as district governor for District 55. One of the saddest days of my life was when Arthur passed away in March, May the 31st of 1997. And he loved the sea. He had served in the Royal Navy in World War II, and we had collected lighthouse memorabilia for him before he passed away. In August of 1997, my husband and I went to Boston, Massachusetts for a Macworld conference. And when we were there, we decided to journey to Portland Head Main Lighthouse. We had bought a print of the Portland Head, Portland Head Main Lighthouse for Arthur. And so we decided to go see the lighthouse ourselves. When we saw it, we were so inspired by it that as we journeyed home, my husband said, why don't we build a lighthouse in honor of Arthur? And so we looked for land for a few years and finally bought a piece of property out in Jonestown overlooking Lake Travis and built a lighthouse. We completed the lighthouse in 2005. My husband, Roger Store was the general contractor, and literally he was on site every day making sure that the lighthouse was built and was built properly. And then, unfortunately, my husband was diagnosed with advanced stage prostate cancer in 2011 and died in 2014. So the lighthouse is now in honor of both Arthur and Roger. So Arthur, mm -hmm. my father-in-law who loved the sea, and Roger, the son who built a lighthouse in his honor. Oh, that's it's such a beautiful story and, and experience for you, Lark. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. We're so glad to have you as a part of District 55. Can you tell us what's so special about District 55? Well, I started my journey in Toastmasters with the Today Toastmasters Club. And so my heart is obviously within this district. However, what's very interesting is that when I started in Today Toastmasters, we were actually a part of District 56. And we split with District 56 in 1997. And as I said, I had the privilege to serve as the first District 55 governor of the new district. So it was 
today Toastmasters in District 56 and then today Toastmasters in District 55. But certainly my heart is with District 55. I was so honored to serve as the first district governor of this district. And we have been a strong district since 1997. And I had the privilege to serve again as a district governor in 2000 to 2001 when unfortunately our district governor had to leave the district. So District 55 will also always have a very special place in my heart. The Today Toastmasters Club is my first club, will always have a special place in my heart. Arthur Store Toastmasters, because it is named after my father-in-law and because I am currently, I have been a charter member of that club and con currently continue to be a member of that club. It all began here. It all began in Austin, Texas. My journey in Toastmasters and communication and leadership began here. And certainly, I expect to stay in District 55 and plan to be a lifelong member of this organization and want to come back to District 55 and to serve District 55 again. My greatest hope is that when I finish my leadership journey, I will come back to the district and serve as an area director again. Wow. So I look forward to asking the district director at that time if they will consider me as an area director because I truly believe that is the best leadership role in Toastmasters. Yes, working directly with the clubs. Exactly. Do you have a word for all District 55 members? I just want every District 55 member to understand the golden opportunities in communication and leadership that our organization affords, and that truly every single day they can learn something else in our organization. They can improve themselves personally. They can improve themselves professionally, just as it's important to eat healthy foods and to exercise regularly. We need to continue to exercise our speaking skills and our leadership skills in order for those skills to remain strong. So I hope every single member will consider a lifelong journey in this organization. It will serve them well, I promise them. You're known as the golden lady of District 55. What does golden mean to you? Golden means that we share the wealth of Toastmasters. So that began when I ran for Lieutenant Governor Marketing. My theme was to share the wealth of Toastmasters. And I used Hershey's Gold Nuggets to hand out any time I went to a club meeting, went to a Toastmasters event to show them that I was sharing the gold of Toastmasters. The next year when I served as Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, it was an Olympic year, and so we had the theme go for gold. And after that, it literally stuck. And I truly believe that Toastmasters is pure gold, that everything we learn in this organization is golden, and that every moment in this organization is golden. So that is why I use the word gold, and I hope everyone will enjoy all of the gold nuggets that Toastmasters has to offer. And as we close, Lark, how will we hear from you over the next two years? What are some of your goals? We have the 2015 strategic plan that has three elements to it, and that is club excellence, member achievement, awareness, engagement, and participation. So I want everyone to know that member achievement is a goal that I believe that we will achieve through pathways. And we are well on our way to achieving that goal. But we are striving this year, next year, and in the years to come to achieve the other two goals of club excellence and awareness, engagement, and participation. Club excellence is up to each and every one of us. 
for us to have quality clubs around our globe, we each have to contribute to that quality. We are looking at ways to reward club quality. We currently have the club Distinguished Club Program, and it recognizes 10 elements of club quality. But we're thinking about what we might be able to do in order to encourage even more club quality throughout our world. Consistent club quality is our goal. And then awareness, engagement, and participation. Many people say that Toastmasters is the best kept secret. We do not want our organization to be a secret. We want it to be a well-known organization. We want everyone to see us and to know us as a dynamic, high-value, experiential learning experience to improve our communication and leadership skills. And we want to be known worldwide for that. So we are looking at global marketing activities. And we announced just recently in Vancouver that we are going to have a pilot program where we are going to do some testing of advertising, social media, and we're going to be doing that in California and Florida, and then certainly we hope that we will then extend that on a global basis. So I look forward to the achievement of our 2015 strategic plan in the areas of club excellence, member achievement, and awareness, engagement, and participation. That's what I want to see in the next two years. Thank you, Lark. We have been speaking with Lark Doley, DTM, President-Elect of Toastmasters International. Lark, thank you for your service. It's been an honor speaking with you. It's been my honor.